here I would like to share you the design aspect of belt and wheel. So because uh, we need to know how to uh, calculate the, the velocity that effectively hit the bucket. So first about the velocity of jet. So what is the meaning of jet here? So the jet here is the water flow with high velocity. So when we call it a water jet or a jet velocity, so it refer a water velocity that comes out from the nozzle. So let's say this is the nozzle. So it, the, the water that comes out from the nozzle is called a water jet. So even uh, the, the word water is not uh, mentioned. So for example, the jet velocity. So you must know that is the velocity of the water that comes out from the nozzle. So and then the equation to, to calculate the water jet is CV times square root 2GH. So I think this equation is uh, commonly found in fluid mechanics 1. So for example, if we have a tank here, so and then we have an outlet like this one, if you compare point number 1 and point number 2 by using Bernoulli equation, you could found that the velocity V2 here is equal to square root 2 g and h so the h here is actually the height of this one okay so and then what is the cv here so the cv here is actually the coefficient of velocity so means uh, the coefficient of velocity why we need to calculate the cv okay because let's say this is the wheel this is the bucket okay and this is our nozzle so and then the velocity comes out and hit the bucket so and then you know the the energy at this point so the water will have certain energy at this point but when water travel from here to here so the distance here will weaken the velocity so means that what we calculate here is actually not 100% reflect the energy that hit the bucket. So, so means that to calculate the accurate energy, we need to multiply with the coefficient. So the CV here is the coefficient between the nozzle here to the point where the water hit the bucket. Okay, so it is around 0 0.95 to 0 0.99. So sometimes it can be ignored because the distance is uh, too short. Okay, so and then the H here. So the H here must be the effective heat. So I think uh, you, you could imagine this one. So let's say this is our nozzle. So if the height here is 100, maybe the effective heat here is 80. Why? Because we need 20 of them to overcome the major and minor loss along the pipe. So means that the 80 here is the energy at the nozzle. And then you need to multiply with the coefficient to get the real energy that hit the bucket. So you must think like that because this is about the losses of water flow. So that's why in fluid mechanics 2, uh, we teach you about the minor and major loss because I hope you could uh, you you will have idea to about the uh, about the losses the energy losses uh, along the flow. So and then the velocity of wheel. So the velocity of wheel can be given like this one. So it is u by the end of sixty. So what is wheel? So we have a nozzle here. So nozzle will hit bucket. And at the same time, the bucket will rotate the wheel. So the, the rotation of this runner, of this wheel, is the velocity of wheel. So we have the symbol is U. So and then the equation is still the same, pi dn over 60. So and then, sometimes they will give you in terms of this equation. So it is phi times square root 2 g and h. So later on, I will... Uh, explain about the the symbol of v the the symbol of phi here okay okay so that is the velocity of wheel and then we have a speed ratio okay so the phi here is called 
as speed ratio. So the speed ratio is the ratio between the wheel and the velocity of jet. So it is it almost the real one. It is between 0 0.43 to 0 0.48. Okay. So what is u? U is the wheel, the velocity of the wheel. So this is the bucket. So, and then this is the nozzle, for example. So, the, the water jet hit the bucket and then it's rotate the wheel. So, the, the, the velocity of wheel is U and this is the velocity of jet. Okay. So, the, the phi is actually the ratio between U and jet. Okay. Why this is important? Because for Pelton wheel engineers. So it is, uh, they must know how to know that, uh, that Pelton wheel working in high efficiency or not. So they, they, need, they need to see, they, they need to measure the jet velocity and also the rotation of the wheel. Because the, the simple idea is if the jet is higher, so means it could rotate the, the wheel at at the high speed too so means that the ratio here is the best one is near to 0 0.5 okay 0 0.5 is actually the theoretical value so it cannot exceed 0 0.5 okay so the maximum value is 0 0.5 so but for sure we have losses in terms of mechanical in terms of uh, water flow and so on and so forth so normally in practical the value is 0 0.43 to 0 0.48 okay so we will see the the calculation of theoretical of phi later on in the next uh, slide so and then this is the angle of deflection the angle of deflection of jet after striking the bucket is taken as 165 degree if no deflection angle is given so it is okay for you but in our syllabus actually we are fixing the uh, the, the the angle is fixed at uh, 165 degree so and then we have jet ratio so jet ratio is defined as the ratio of the pitch diameter of the Pelton wheel to the diameter of jet. It is denoted by M and given as M equal D over D. So this is uh, the simple one to know the size of the nozzle. So because if your nozzle is too big, it might be uh, the, the, the energy is wasted because the diameter of your Pelton wheel is too small. Means that uh, to make sure that we could get the optimum size so we could see the the ratio of m here which is the diameter of pelton wheel divided by the ratio uh, the diameter of the jet so and then uh, for maximum hydraulic efficiency maybe the the ratio is 11 to 16 and uh, the the most uh, the common one is 12 so this is the general knowledge for the pelton wheel So, and then the bucket dimension. So, bucket dimension are designed in such a way that its breadth should be three to four times of diameter of jet. It should be two to three times of diameter of jet and thickness should be 0 0.8 to 1.2 times of the diameter of the jet. So, number of jet is obtained by dividing the total flow rate through the turbine by the flow rate of water through a single jet. So, this is a simple one. So, for example, we have a tank here. So, and then it's divided into two jets. So, if the flow rate here is Q is 2, so means that it will flow Q equal to 1 for each nozzle. So, normally, it will distribute it equally. So, in general, number of jets are limited to 2 in case of vertical and 6 in case of horizontal runner. So, this is the, the vertical means if the wheel is in vertical so it is only maximum to have two jets and if the uh, if the pelton wheel is in horizontal like this one okay so maybe you, we could have a six uh, jet 
to rotate the pattern wheel. So and then number of bucket. So number of bucket on a runner is given by this one. So where the D, capital D is pitch diameter, small d is diameter of jet, and the M here is the jet ratio. So this is important to make sure that, for example, we have a bucket here. Because when a water jet hit a bucket here, so the bucket will move, will rotate like that. And to make sure that the, the next the next uh, bucket here will come uh, in action after the bucket here release all the energy means uh, it is not disturb the the time when the, the this water hit the bucket so that is the idea because we want to optimum the absorption of energy from the water jet 